In this video, I'll go through some tricky questions on closures in JavaScript. These questions can really challenge your JavaScript knowledge and are helpful when it comes to clearing interviews as well. If you want more videos like these, then do comment down your thoughts and I'll create many more similar videos on different concepts in the future. So let's start with the first question. What do you think will be the output of this? Think about it first before hearing my explanation. A lot of people usually think the answer would be 10 and 20. But that's incorrect. The right answer here is undefined and 20. The first console will print undefined and the second would print 20. This happens because of the scope of the closure itself and a feature of JavaScript called hoisting. So when this code is interpreted, it gets converted to something like this behind the scenes. In JavaScript, variables declared using the var keyword are function scoped, not block scoped. This means that variable declarations are hoisted to the top of their containing function or global scope, but their assignments remain where they are in the code. So what's happening here step by step is, first, the variable num is declared and initialized to 10 at the top level scope. Then inside the immediately invoked function expression or IIFE, the variable num is declared again within the function scope and initialized to 20. The declaration is hoisted to the top of the function scope but doesn't affect the outer num variable. Then, when you first console log num inside the function, it refers to the function scope num, which has been declared but not yet assigned a value, so it logs undefined. Then lastly, when you console log num again inside the function, it refers to the function scope num, which has now been assigned the value of 20, so it logs 20. Now moving on to the second question, which says create a function multiply that multiplies these three numbers provided that the arguments are passed in this manner. Well, someone new to JavaScript might think what this 2, 3, 4 in curly braces are, but it's a simple example of currying. The goal here is to create a function called multiply that can be called in a chain like multiply 2, 3, 4 and returns the multiplication of three arguments 2, 3 and 4, which equals to 24. So let's write the logic. Here, the multiply function is already defined to take a single argument a. When you call multiply and pass 2, you're passing 2 as the value for a. This returns a new function that's waiting for the next argument, which is b. Now when you call the function returned in step 1 with 3, which is multiply 2 and now 3, you're passing 3 as the value for b. This returns yet another function that's waiting for the final argument, which is c. Now finally when you call the function returned in step 2 with the value 4, which in this case will be multiply 2, 3 and now 4, you're passing 4 as the value for c. This innermost function then performs the multiplication a into b into c, which is 2 into 3 into 4, resulting in 24. The key concept here is that each function returned by multiply captures its respective argument a, b or c and holds onto it as a closure until all three arguments have been provided. Once all three arguments are available, the innermost function performs the multiplication and returns the result. This technique is known as currying, where a function that takes multiple arguments is transformed into a series of single argument functions It can be called sequentially. It's a powerful concept for creating flexible and composable functions in JavaScript. Now moving on to the third question, what do you think will be the output of this code? Take a moment to figure it out on your own. Alright, so a lot of people get confused thinking the output of this code should be 1 and 1, but the correct answer is 1 and 0. So what's happening here is, a global variable count is declared and initialized to 0 at the top level scope. Then the immediately invoked function expression is defined and executed. Inside the function, there is a local variable count declared using let and initialized to 1. This local count variable shadows the global count variable within the function scope. So within this function scope, there are two variables named count, one global and one local. The first console log of count statement inside the function prints the local count variable, which is 1. This is why you see 1 as the first output. After printing 1, the local or block scope ends, and the local count variable goes out of scope. And because of that, the second console log of count statement inside the function prints the global count variable, which is still 0. This is why you see 0 as the second output. Now moving on to the fourth question, what do you think will be the output for this? Many people would usually predict the output to be 0, 1 and 2, but that's incorrect. The correct answer is 3 being printed 3 times. Let's understand this step by step. 
the var declaration in JavaScript has function scope, not block scope. This means that when you declare a variable with var inside a function, it is hoisted to the top of the function and there is only one instance of that variable shared within the entire function. The var i declaration is hoisted to the top of the a function. So there is only one i variable shared by all the iterations of the loop. Now note that all the three iterations happen super fast before 1000 milliseconds can pass and even the first set timeout function can execute. And the set timeout functions are scheduled to execute after i milliseconds with the i value at that time. However, since there is only one i variable shared across all iterations, by the time the set timeout function actually execute, which is after the loop has finished, the value of i is 3. Now after this, the interviewer could ask you to modify the code to get the output as 0, 1 and 2 instead. There are two good ways to do that. First would be changing the var to let keyword. When you use let to declare a variable inside a block, like a for loop in this case, it creates a new variable for each iteration of the loop, effectively giving each iteration its own isolated variable with its own value. This is known as block scope. And because of that, you can see we get 0, 1 and 2 as the output this time. And the other way is to capture the current value of i for each iteration. One way to do that is to use an immediately invoked function expression to create a new scope for each i value. This way, each set timeout function captures a different index value and you'll get the output 0, 1, 2 as expected. Now moving on to the last question, the fifth one, which is another output based question. Think about the answer on your own first before proceeding with the video. So the output of this code is zero. Let's break down the code step by step. The outermost immediately invoked function expression is called with the argument zero. This sets a to zero. Then inside the outer function, there's another immediately invoked function expression that takes an argument b and is immediately called with the argument one. This sets b to one. Now inside the inner function, there's a console log a statement. Now a isn't declared within this inner function. So when you reference a inside the inner function, it looks for the value of a in its nearest and closing scope, which is the outer function in this case. Therefore, it logs the value of a from the outer function, which is zero in this case. And with that, we're done with the five questions. So that's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.